Hi, welcome to the 40th episode of The Chess Files. The answers are out there. I'm James Eade of the Eade Foundation, and uh, you could call me Jim. The Eade Foundation is dedicated to building communities through chess. And a uh, little bit about me, I started playing when I was a teenager and I got pretty good. I became a FIDE master. And a FIDE master basically is the kind of guy who's um, good enough to fight with grandmasters, but not really good enough to become one. So I turned my attention to chess writing, chess organizing, and uh, doing other things. Uh, and I uh, wrote Chess for Dummies, which uh, thanks to uh, the Queen's Gambit has gotten incredible uptick in sales. And this is something that I'm gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the effect that uh, getting chess on television can, can have on the game. So uh, that's sort of what I've been doing. In 2018, I got a, an award from the United States Chess Federation for an outstanding career achievement. But that's enough about me. What about the foundation? The foundation, as I said, is dedicated to building communities through chess. We don't care what country you're from, what language you speak. It just doesn't matter. And if you play chess with your community, you, you form a unique, lasting friendships that that can survive from childhood to adulthood and beyond so these are the types of things that we want to encourage and if you have the ability to access the internet you can play anyone anywhere at any time but if you don't if you don't have the resources to get started the foundation can help you and that's what we're trying to do um and you know we we send chess sets and boards and other kinds of equipment to countries like uh uganda zambia we've got uh the latest one is north africa but we also do things for seniors and um we we as we think that uh chess sets and boards for senior centers is a big deal because um there are studies out there that show that it, although it can't change it cannot stop the uh, effects of uh, dementia and dementia-related illnesses due to aging, uh, it can delay the symptoms. It can delay the onset of the symptoms. So chess can be uh, a solace even in, in our older ages. And uh, of course, we were involved in the Youth Foundation too because we, want to, we were dedicated to chess excellence and chess literacy. So we also support um, things that go on in the chess community. And you know, from the very young, to the very old. It just doesn't matter. If you play chess and you give the gift of chess to a child, you can give a gift that lasts a lifetime. And that's the foundation of the Eid Foundation. That's the basis for, and it's our mission, is to help people get together, even if they lack the resources, to form a community. Because it's all about forming a community. If you're part of a community, you're never alone. So today's question, because the chess files tells you that the answers are out there but what's the question today's question is what is the what why isn't there more chess on television and so i didn't know the answer to this except you know people you know, people be snarky well it's like watching paint dry or you know why don't why isn't there a show about grass growing and, you know i've heard all the kind of snickering but you know, I think if we do put our minds to it, we can get chess on television. So I turned to a, a, a man who actually has a show on television about chess. And his name is George Marijanian, and I'm gonna bring him on now. George, hello. Hello, hello, Jim. Thank you for joining us today. And I've uh, teased the audience a little bit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna change the banner that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen now to um Tell me a little bit about this organization. That's FATV.org. FATV.org is the website of the uh, Fitchburg Access Television in Fitchburg, Massachusetts, which is in north central Massachusetts, close to the New Hampshire border. And it is a pioneer in TV broadcasting, in, in, in the community cable access TV. It, uh, it, it was established in 1987. It is now, we'll be celebrating its 35th year anniversary next year. Uh, and we have, we'll have a big celebration for that. Sure. But, but I got involved with uh, FATV, Fishburg Access Television, in October 2006, when prompted by my niece, uh, who said, you know, why isn't there chess on TV? I said, you know what? I think I'm gonna check into this. We have a local TV station, a community-based station, uh, they might be interested, actually, in having chess because we do have a local chess club 
the second oldest chess club in the state of Massachusetts, right here in Fitchburg. So I went to them, and they were enamored. They, they were enamored of the idea of having chess on TV, and that's where I started 15, about 15 years ago, in October 2006. And I've been doing chess with a co-host. I've actually, this is my fourth co-host. Dave Cooch is my current co-host, a great guy uh, uh, who, uh, who's done me well, who's provided me good material. Uh, and uh, again, we'll be doing our, next month, August, We'll be doing our 160th program. Whoa! FA TV. And these Good. and these Tip programs. Of the hat. And these programs are, are predominantly are they're half hour programs. But well, but when Fisher died, 2018 was January 17th. The following month, we did a special on Fisher. We've done actually two specials, both of them on Fisher, uh, which the station certainly approved wholeheartedly of doing an hour special. On Bobby Fisher, uh, because Bobby Fisher appeared in Fitchburg. You know, he came to Fitchburg. Get and, out. No, you know, he came to Fitchburg. The the date he gave a simul uh, at the Wachusa Chess Club. Again, our club. He did it on March second, nineteen sixty four. And you know, I get always asked people, chess players from the Boston area or from other parts, to say, "Wait a minute, yeah, didn't Fisher come to other chess clubs?" In Massachusetts, I said no. He only came to Fitchburg, Massachusetts, to the Wachusett Chess Club. There's got to be a story behind that. Did well, he have a relative there? No, he didn't have well, anywhere else. No, he there. had no relatives whatsoever. No. no, Fisher actually must have done his research. He, in fact, he did his research. You know, actually, I believe who the person who re arranged uh, Fisher's uh, national tour in 1964 was Larry Evans' father. Larry Evans' father is the one who made the arrangement for this tour. Uh, That's interesting. I had no idea. That's no, Larry fascinating. Evans father, yes, made the arrangements you know, for the tour. And uh, our president of, the, of our club, his name was Rocco Pasquale, found that out. And he contacted uh, uh, Larry Evans' father and arranged to have Fisher come to Fishburne. But Fisher, Fisher actually, according to Mr. Evans, said, you know, wait, wait, why are we coming? We're not coming to any rinky dink club. He did his research and found out that Fitchburg at then was the chess capital of the state. It ran the most successful tournaments in the, in, in the 60s, and right through the 70s, up to the mid 80s. It was the Central New England Open uh, held in Fitchburg. We had, we had Grandmasters. I, we had uh, Grandmaster Shabkovich, uh, Peter Biasis, and uh, in, in top players, IMs. Later, I, people like Ilya Gurevich. You know, became yes. a yeah. Patrick Wolf. I mean, top players came to play in their early when they were young. Came and played in the Central New England Open in Fitchburg, and of course, Fisher found that out. He found out, hey, I'm coming to the hot spot in Massachusetts. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, and that's yeah. why he came. And he did actually. The people in Boston were not too pleased that he bypassed the Boston Chess Club. I you know, can imagine. Yeah, the biggest and oldest chess club. But he did come back. He did come back in May of that year, 64, and did perform a simul at the Harvard Club, which wasn't a chess club. It was the Harvard Club in Boston. And he did satisfy the players in Boston by coming back. But, you know, this is all written up, actually, in Don Donaldson's book. Wonderful he, book. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was A Legend on the Road, Bobby Fisher's uh, 1964 yeah. National Chess Tour. And I, I have to thank John Donaldson for what he said about Fisher's appearance at Fishburg. He say he, he he said, and I, I'll, I'll I'll paraphrase him. He said the best coverage of Fisher's to, uh, simuls that he gave across the country was actually in Fitchburg. The local paper, the Fitchburg Sentinel, had the best coverage of any newspaper that covered Fisher's simuls. You know, in various states in, in the nation, and I'm yeah, very and, pleased that he did that. And Donaldson is famous for his researchers. Ability. Oh. He he's a tremendous researcher. So when he you get praise like that from him, yeah, you know that's something. Yeah, it is. That, so very... good, good for you. Good for the town. Good for uh, chess. Um, so Fitchburg has been around for a long time, and you've got the Fitchburg Access TV. Uh, it, that Fitch, Fitchburg Chess has been established and running for a long time, but you got it onto TV. But right. before I get into that, 
which is the main thing I want to talk to you about. I, my producer is barking in my ear. He, he wants me to ask the, the, the usual questions like, yeah. where'd you grow up, George? And um, where do you live now? And how'd you get started in chess? Okay. Well, I was born and raised in Fishburg. I lived here all my life. And uh, I, but I, I learned chess actually at a relatively old age. 15 years old is actually, I consider old uh, to learn the game of chess. But I, that was back in 1958, you know. Uh, uh, and I, I joined the local club before it actually adopted an official name. And it was known as the Fitchburg Chess Club, but it wasn't until February 1960 that it officially became the Wachusett Chess Club and became an affiliate of the U.S. Chess Federation. And we are, again, the second oldest chess club in the state, second only to the Boylston Chess Club, you know, which now meets in North Cambridge. But again, we have a very long history, uh, and we've had other grandmasters appear, like uh, Rish Sam Bershevsky, Larry Evans, Arthur Biskeyer, uh, even Yasser Serwan came in 1984. We had actually Tigran give a simul at the club in February 1982. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So now we, that's a feather in your cap. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because, you know, I, li I live out near the Mechanics Institute, and it's got a storied history going back into the 19th century. And, you know, the, the grandmasters and world champions that have come through it, that's very impressive. But um, the the idea that you were in a North Central Massachusetts location and you could attract those people to, to – if you were in Boston or New York City, I would say sure. But Fitchburg, that's, that's an accomplishment to get them to go there. Yes, it is. Exactly. Yeah. And we're yep. very pleased that they did come and play in our in our tournaments actually in Fitchburg. Yeah. yeah. And so that's a wonderful history. And, uh, you know, I got started. It, it, I turned 15 in uh, 1972. Um, and for obvious reasons, uh, no bonus points from people guessing why I got started in chess. And um, but I played in some early tournaments. Uh, the first tournament, I think, was run by, by a fellow that we both know, Bob Corwin. Um, oh, yeah. but, um, second to that, or not maybe second, but very soon on its heels, I played in a Fitchburg quad, which you were running with a guy named Stefan. Versus there's a Dallas. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. He yeah. became a very, very, uh, uh, very well-known po postal player, correspondence player. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but he wrote books. He was actually an author. He's written actually uh, several books. Uh, uh, there are several books by Gerzo Dowitz, and uh, there's actually a connection. Well, okay, uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, uh, you know, today is Fabiano Caruana's uh, 29th birthday. Did you know that? Yeah. You always amaze me, but you, you know the birthdays of just about everybody. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I did, did not know that. Oh. No, because I, I, Shout I, out. I, yeah. I, should let you, I should let your listeners and viewers know that every day, uh, uh, people know Hannon Russell. Hannon Russell, a, a player I've known from years, but I, a lot of people would know him as a book publisher, a chess yes. book publisher. And he actually has a site, a Facebook page, which is a Russell Enterprises Inc. Facebook. And every day he posts actually either a birth date or a death date of a prominent player or a or, or date of a significant chess event. And I add to that. I, you know, I, I told Hannon, I said, yeah, would you mind? I bet you do. I said, you know, would you mind if I add additional birthdays of uh, players of, of renown? He said, no. He said, that by all means, add to it. And I do that every day. So I posted uh, uh, Fabiano's uh, birthday. Uh, again, it was this past, it was a past, no, today is his birthday. It's posted. Yes, it's posted yeah. on today's. But I, I've done, Nick DeFermian had a birthday just this past Monday, July 26th. I posted actually uh, the, uh, information about Nick DeFermian on yeah. his page. Yeah. So I Shout enjoyed, out to Nick. Yeah, right. But I enjoy chess history. I'm a great believer in preserving chess history yeah. and, uh, and and posting it online for the, the benefit of our, our chess players. Yeah. Well, it's part of a chess culture. You know, when back in the day before the internet, you know, we had a chess culture that we passed on often just through oral history. And sometimes the books were, were not few and far between, but they weren't so common. 
And so the, the books that we all had, we had all read the same stories. And so we kind of knew the same things. But, you know, I, I think you might have been the first person to correct my pronunciation of uh, Fianchetto. Fianchetto, yeah. Fianchetto, Fianchetto. Yes. Fianchetto. All of us said Fianchetto when I was growing oh, yeah. up. Right, exactly. Because uh, we, we, we pr pronounced it the way it's spelled, but we didn't yeah. pronounce it the Italian way. The CH in Italian like that is pronounced like a K. Fianchetto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fianchetto. So Fianchetto. ever ever since then, I have said Fianchetto. And uh, but there's uh, also but, but it's also the pronunciation of players' names. You know, a lot yeah. of players actually miss. They actually what they they put the accent on the wrong syllable. You know, now I I I, I again I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hardcore uh, you know fanatic. When I hear people say Kas Kasparov is a Kasparov, I want to hear Kasparov. I want to hear Shamkovich. Yeah. You know, Yes. And, learned, and there's a book. The way I, they say it. Yeah, the way they say it. Exactly. Yeah. With yeah. the correct pronunciation. I want to hear Taimanov. I don't want to see Taimanov. I want to hear Taimanov. Yeah. But I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a purist. I believe actually in correct pronunciation of, of players' names. Uh, and uh, yeah. So, again, for example, I don't want, the, I don't want to hear Smyslov. I want to, I want to Smyslov in the accent on the second syllable. Right. I mean, so they get the syllable wrong. Yes, right. So <laughs> call me a nitpicker, but that's that's who I am. I'm a nitpicker yeah. when it comes to names and pronunciation. Yeah. Well, you know, I always appreciate it. I never feel like uh, it's something that's it's it's not. I don't think of it as ignorance so much as nescience. You know, I was never exposed to anybody who said the names properly. So all I could do was learn by reading, and right. then of course I would not pronounce it correctly. And right. So if someone told me well, how it was supposed to be said, I was appreciative, you know, because well, even the variations of openings could be, I would butcher them. Yeah. Now, I learned something new to, uh, this this past year. There's mm -hmm. a book that has come out by Taylor Kingston, who's a very, very- A great writer. Great, a great researcher. writer. researcher. Yeah. And he did Shout a Shout out, Taylor. Yeah. Uh, Taylor did a great book on Edgar, well, we, we pronounced it Colley, Edgar Colley. It, it, Taylor, I said, no, that's not the correct pronunciation of his name. His, the, pr the pronunciation of Edgar Colley's name is really Edgar Kulle. Edgar Kulle. It sounds more like Kulle than Colley. So I, I was astounded when, I, I, when he told me that's the pronunciation, that was the pronunciation of his name. I learned something. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah, because we always talk about the Kali system. Kali, yeah, exactly. Kali yeah. is the Kali system. Yeah, <laughs> so, a, lot, a lot to be learned in chess uh, when it comes. Absolutely, to and you never stop learning. Right. You know, it, right. It doesn't matter how much you know; you only know a little. Right. And um, it's it's um, the, one of the endless fascinations of the game itself. But now let's turn our attention to the how did you get on um, the Fitchburg Access TV. How, did you approach somebody with the idea? I, I approached actually the uh, the executive director, uh, and he, he was very receptive to the idea because he, the, the station said we need diversified programming. You know, we we, we have three channels. FATV, Fitchburg Action Television, has three channels: public, a public channel, an educational channel, and a governmental channel, and and they do well on all three. But on their public channel, they wanted diversity. You know, they, they, they had cooking shows. They, they had actually religious shows on the government channel. They covered the, uh, the city council meetings, school committee meetings, all kinds of committee meetings. They cover the city very well as far as letting the people know what is going on in the city. Lots of talk shows discussing issues, local issues. So, again, FATV is, it, it has been a pioneer in, in diversified program. And they said, wait a minute, this is a great opportunity for ha for us to have something that no one else has. They asked me, he says, is chess being uh, shown anywhere else, you know, on the TV? I said, as far as I know, I'm not aware of any other TV station. Certainly you're not going to see it on the networks. Uh, but I said, as far as uh, community access, uh, cable access, uh, community program, community TV, no, I'm not aware of it. They said, we want it. We want to have it. We want to support it. And they've been doing it for the past 15 years. And I really uh, uh, sh uh, shout out to them for their support uh, of our program on FATV. And we've done some great programming. Last month, and you did it, you did it also recently, 
we did a tribute to Carol Jarecki, International Arbiter, yes. National TD Carol Jarecki, who passed away in June. We did a, a great tribute to Carol Jarecki. We did actually uh, the month before that, we did the anniversary, 100th anniversary of the Capablanca Alaska World uh, Championship match in Havana, Cuba. Remember, this is the 100th anniversary of that match. It was held in 1921. We did a month before that, we did uh, Nepomniki, Jan Nepomniki winning the candidates tournament. We've done actually tributes to players upon their death. We did actually on Arthur Biscaya, Bill Lombardi, Larry Evans, uh, uh, Lubabir Kavalek. Uh, we, we do tributes. To I'm players. writing these down, George. You're giving me ideas for future shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These and are great we, ideas. And we do we do some some stuff that the people uh, really are pleased with when we talk about, for example, how many people knew that Sergei Prokofiev, the great Russian composer, visited Maurice Ravel in France many years back in oh. the 1920s, and they play the game, an informal game, which is actually can be found online. We presented that game. We actually, my host and I, analyzed the game. We presented music from both the composers. and with oh. <laughs> uh, So we talked about the, the, the they were both passionate uh, chess players. Prokofiev was the better better of the two, better than Ravel. But we did a program about that. The, the yeah. meeting of uh, Prokofiev with Ravel in in France uh, at, at Ravel's home, uh, and uh, that was that got very reviews. Of course, I want to talk a little bit about that because um, I believe chess. It, our society would be incrementally improved if it was part of our culture. And sure. and and this is it's like music. It has the power to make people happy. And it is an amazing thing, but I want to backslide a little bit to what we were talking about because I got a comment from our viewers. Hi, mom. Um, it's how do you pronounce P I R C? Pirt, Pirt. Yeah, Vasya, Vasya Pirt. Yeah, because I would when I was just reading it, I said perk. Right. Oh, yeah. You, I, I, that's what I heard when I was playing years when I started years ago. I would hear perk. Yeah, yeah, perk. But it's Pirt, Pirt. Pirt. Yeah, Pirt. Okay. Yeah, so um, thank you for the question, viewing audience, and uh, Pierce is the Pierce, answer. Pierce, yeah, Pierce. Okay, so now um, I think we both have a love for the game, and we both think that uh, it would improve uh, generally. If it was in the school systems, everybody learned chess. It would teach them life lessons that are, some of them, directly transferable back into the classroom. And I think our educators have learned that. And so there's been an explosion in scholastic chess since I started playing. And um, it's also welcoming to girls. When you know when I started playing chess, it was all boys at, or, or men at a tournament. And this is definitely changing. Although it's slower than many of us want it to be, it's still, still changing. But this access to television, tell me more. You approached the executive director and he was open to it. That's yeah. the first. Exactly, yeah. Okay. And we started off small. We actually, our very first program was only 15 minutes long. And then I convinced the executive director, no, we need more time. If we're going to, if we're going, we talk, we actually, our first uh, couple of shows, we're actually teaching, we're actually uh, teaching chess. But then we got into actually discussing chess, you know, right? and presenting players, talking about chess players and what they did, how they performed. And, you know, it wasn't until uh, well, uh, 2010 was it 2000? Let's see, you know, one of our shining guests, special guests, we've had actually more than a half a dozen times on the show. She's a very popular guest on our show when she appears. Is Carissa Yip? Now the mm -hmm. name Carissa Yip. Anyone who who's serious about chess in this country who's not have heard not heard the name Carissa Yip, it, it can't be that serious about chess because Carissa Yip. Who actually is now uh, became an I an I am. Uh, she's a woman grandmaster. She won the uh, U.S. Girls Championship back in 2020. Has played, has competed in the U.S. Women's Championship. Has beaten Irina Crush, uh, yeah, uh, several a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, Irina uh, 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 Carissa yet became a member of our club, and she won. Oh, cool. At the age of 10, she won the Wachusa Chess Club with a perfect score. Wow. All seven games at the age of ten in 2014. 
So, and, and she's appeared on our show numerous times again because she's played actually all over the world. She's played in yeah. World, world, yeah. World under under age tournaments, you know, in various. They're so experienced now, you know. When you and I started playing, and you know, fourteen, fifteen, and they are so experienced now compared to the way. How did we get experience, you know, into our 20s and 30s? Then we were starting to get some experience. Right. <laughs> they're getting it when they're 12 years old now. <laughs> it's unbelievable. No, but th that's a wonderful change. It's a wonderful thing. And, you know, I challenged uh, Irina Crush to a game once. Yes. But I was slowly backing out of the room when I was doing it. But, yeah, these are fantastic women's players now and it's so nice uh because walking into a chess club can be intimidating male or female you know yeah. people are are not necessarily coming up and shaking your hand saying hi good to see you who are you We're, you know my you know please join our club you know right. they're they're kind of like sizing you up right from the start you right. know <laughs> so we we could be a little bit more gracious in welcoming newcomers into our, our communities but uh you know we can work on that and, right. yeah. and uh, we'll get better. And I think the more women that there are comfortable coming into the clubs, the more people will become more welcoming as well as uh, as as uh, less intimidated by coming into the room. So yeah. I think this is all wonderful things. And I think I firmly believe that if there is exposure on television, such as you've been able to do, um, it will become more or um, less commonplace and it won't be it, you you won't be teased for being a chess player uh you know if you're a girl or you know like chess nerd was the way i, I was called in high school and um you know because i had success in an adult tournament and then people you know i would have my picture in the hometown newspaper and then all my classmates that's what they you know they people who didn't know me would just say chess nerd <laughs> right. but right. it wouldn't what if it was just more you know in the common right. then it wouldn't you wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb so much right. so okay. tell me more about you you got a 15 minute show and then you said you needed more time and yeah. you're not talking about chess moves anymore you're not talking about how to play you're no. talking about the characters of the game exactly yeah, yeah. And, and, and again we've done a variety of shows on on, on, on people, we did a book, like a, a program about Nabokov, Vladimir Nabokov, who was a passionate chess player, uh, who composed- Great art. writer. Great writer, yeah, L L Lolita, known for Lolita. Yes. Other thing, uh, we've done, a, 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 again, we and we've done all, actually we've done tributes to players, both who have passed away, but also those who are still living. You know, we've you know we we've done programs on our uh, on our top players in Massachusetts, certainly Alexander Ivanov or Larry Christensen or or Igor uh, 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 Ilya uh, Ilya Foigel and David Vigorito, Jim Rosatano, uh, Patrick Wolf. I mean, we we do we do tribute. I believe in actually showing appreciation of what these players have done uh, by by being first of all in our state. But we also do uh, tributes to players who live outside Massachusetts. They're, they're not they're not forgotten. And uh, again, one of the shows I really appreciate that we did, you know, when when Harry Nelson Pillsbury died, he died actually on June seventeenth, nineteen oh six. A hundred years later, on the exact date, June seventeenth, two thousand and six. I and a contingent of uh, Massachusetts Chess Association members. We're at the cemetery in Reading, Massachusetts, where Harry Nelson Pillsbury is buried, and we actually had we, we actually had a ceremony for a plaque that we unveiled at at the gravesite. I am so touched by that. That is so yeah, wonderful that, that you found that. That. Was, that was an historic event. We did that a hundred years to the day, because Harry, no one knew. Who, who Harry Nelson Pillsbury? All that is marked in his grave, which is actually located in the rear, the remote area of the cemetery, is just this obelisk that says Pillsbury and nothing else. It, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, no listing of Harry or H. I mean, he was in, it was unknown. Who, who, who is this Pillsbury? What we found out is Harry Nelson Pillsbury and his family. And of course, I get asked occasionally, 
Why is Harry Nelson Pillsbury buried in Reading, Massachusetts? Did he ever live there? No, he never set foot in, 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 in Reading, Massachusetts. He, you know, he was born in Somerville, uh, Massachusetts on December 5th, 1872, but actually then got married, you know, he got married, lived in, lived in Philadelphia. That's where he died. He died in, in, in the Philadelphia area, uh, but he never set foot in Reading. So the question put to me is, why is he buried in Reading? Well, I have the answer. He is buried there because his mother was the daughter of a very prominent shoe manufacturer in Reading, Massachusetts. So that's actually why Harry got buried with his mother and other family members in Reading, Massachusetts. He that sounds to, natural enough, but if you didn't know the story, you have you, to know the story. You have, yeah. You have to know the story why Harry Nelson Pillsbury is buried in, in Laurel Hill Cemetery in Reading, Massachusetts. And it's a very difficult, it's a remote part of the cemetery. But thanks to uh, the Massachusetts Chess Association planting a, pl a, pla a plaque oh, in stone, actually, it was actually etched in stone, that this was Harry Nelson Pillsbury, U.S. champion, we put the years, and also the, the winner, the champion of the 1895 uh, international tournament at Hastings. We identified famous him. the the, the yeah. tournament, the, the tournament, which made him famous. That yeah. actually put, put Harry Nelson's uh, name on the uh, on the chess map. Uh, right. So we did that, and I'm very proud that we we did that, and we also had a program, you know, devoted to that ceremony uh, that we did actually in uh, 2000 2006. I mean, so again, we we love to pay honor to chess players, past and present but also report on things uh, dealing with chess. We did a program on Ray Charles. When Ray Charles played uh, Larry Evans in an informal game years ago, we presented the game that Ray Charles, who was blind, played yeah. against Larry Evans. We did yeah. a program about that. Yeah. So we, we've done a, a, a number of programs you know, of, of, uh, of, uh, of great interest. And this, again, is coming, this is coming from the heart. This is the, it's the yeah. love of the game, the love of the players that played it. And, you're doing a great service. I got to. I got to say. I got to tell you about one program we did. Okay. That the executive director came to me at the station and said, "Wow, I can't believe the number of hits you've received on our website." So we have received actually close to eleven thousand hits for what for this chess chat program. I said, "Which one was that?" He said, "You did something. You did a tribute to some Estonian player. Who is who is this guy? Uh, here he is." I, I, yeah, oh, Paul, Paul Carey's. I said, we did a tribute to Paul Carey's, and we got bombarded with hits uh, predominantly from Europe. I mean, Europeans uh, went to that. And again, I have to thank Susan Polgar, because back then when I did that, trip, out. I, I, I sent, I used to send a little, a little a hint, a link to Susan, so she could post on her website, and she posted a link to the chess tap program, and sure enough, it really, it, 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 it reached all the play, all the players, you know. I mean, uh, and, and we got close to 11,000 hits on that single program on Paul Carey's, yeah. who died, actually, was he died, at, was a 79 in Helsinki, Finland, at the airport. Yeah, but he was a great player. He was one, one of the sad, sad stories is that we, we, many of us think that he could have been world champion yeah, I agree. In, under yeah. different circumstances in right. his life. But what you're describing, Susan, helping you with the link, uh, this is part of what it means to be part of a community. You know, you reach out and tell her I'm, I'm doing this. And she, of course, uh, knows and respects Carrie's as much as anyone and, and helped you out with the link back to, to your show. And then all of a sudden you get more hits, more yeah. people are involved. Yeah. And this is, this is how we help each other. There's a player out here, Chris Torres, who's an organizer and scholastic teacher. And um, he does the same thing for me. He, and I'll, I'll notice that when Chris Torres promotes my show, I get more views. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so I try to do shouts out to people that I think are helping other people um, connect and get people involved in the chess community, bringing them into the chess community. So, you know, I don't care what you look like. I don't care what language you speak doesn't matter to me you know if you're trying to build the chess community wherever you are whatever however you're doing it you know I'm be, I'm behind you I want to support you so that's the the purpose of the foundation and you're doing the real work out there George with your show 
But I have to ask you, you don't do it by yourself. No, you no. I have a crew. I, I, I should identify my crew. My crew, I have a I have an award-winning director, by the way, who has stayed with us all all through right from the beginning, 2000, from two, October 2006. His name is Darren Dame. He's actually received high honors, I mean, an award from the station. Uh, every year they actually give out an award called the Boulder Award because it's, it's, it, we have a big boulder in the city of Fishbury. That's, Fishbury is known for this huge boulder, uh, you know, at, at, the, uh, at the upper common in the city. And, and we, the, the station awards a Boulder Award, and uh, he received it in 2007. You know, actually, 14 years ago, he received an award, and he is considered one of the top directors, one of the top TV directors on Fishburg Access Television. And my co-host is Dave Kucher, who is a, a, a photographer. A book, he's written books. He's written chess books. He wrote actually one on on don't. He wrote a book called "Don't Play Like Me." One hundred one chess tactics. He's done actually progress. He's done books on tactics. He has two books on chess tactics. His name is Dave Kucher, C O U T U R, and my uh, and he's uh, he he actually went to uh, St. Louis Chess Club, had a photo taken with Rex Singfield. It's on our uh -huh. website, and our 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 key cameraman. You know, back in the old days, we actually had four cam. We had actually four camera people, but we found out we could actually do this with one camera person who could operate four cameras. Believe it or not, and his name is Brian Bigelow. And so it's basically Shout our out to Brian, Brian Bigelow, Dave Kucher, and of course our award-winning director Darren Dave, who makes it possible. Because you know I I make fun of my producer all the time, but maybe what I need is a director. Yes, <laughs> he's yelling at me. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, you need a crew, and and yeah. here is my advice to chess players in this country, who want to see chess on TV. You want to see more chess on TV? There are chess players who live in communities. Who have a local station, a local community cable access station? Now, what they should consider going to that station and see and, and asking the people at the station whether they would be receptive to having a chess program on on their TV station, because these cable access stations in these communities are in need of diversified programming. I know I, I go on various websites of different cable access stations, and and and, and they, they say we look we 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 want we we welcome any diversity in our programming, and I think chess players should actually sound these stations out in the communities where they live, where there where there is cable access TVs, who are serviced by like a Comcast or Verizon, and find out if 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 these stations are receptive. To having chess telecast on their stations, especially in those communities that have chess clubs. If a, if a yes. community has a chess club and wants to promote their club or promote chess in general, they should sound out, go to these stations, and see what sort of reaction they get from the people at these stations. And they they, they may be surprised, and they may find out that these stations say, you know what, we could you could you do this? Could you put together? A program uh, uh, promoting your club, presenting a, a game like every week or, or every month, once a month. Now, our station, FATV, our show, we do it once a month, but it's shown six times a week. It's shown Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. So it's shown multiple times per week. It's not just shown once a week. We do it live. Uh, now, now, our show that we're showing next month, Next month's show, by the way, in August, is going to be on the 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 final. It will show it'll be on the FIDE World Cup. We'll we'll know who the winner is. We'll present Sam it. Sam Shanklin. Yeah, you know, well, he got <laughs> I, Sam Shanklin got knocked out. Unfortunately, he lost. Oh no! Yeah, I got that, I got that news today. The Shanklin lost to Kariakin. So Kariakin, yeah. So uh, Sam. I was rooting for Sam Shanklin. Yeah. Because, because Sam Shanklin has a Massachusetts connection. He graduated no. from Brandeis University. Oh well, He's there a, you go. Yeah. I yeah. did not know that because no, he's got a Northern no. California connection, of course. Exactly. Right. Yeah. exactly. I was rooting for Sam. I wanted the Sam go all the way. Yeah. So we're going to do Nice the, guy, too. No, yeah. excellent guy. Uh, and, and we're going to do a show on the FIDE World Cup, and we, 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 we stay up to date as far as what's happening in the chess world with the, with the events, but also with the people. 
you know, and uh, we, we we like to honor them, you know. Uh, so hopefully we'll not have any deaths in the, in in the near future. Uh, for example, Ruth Herring. When Ruth Herring died, died. Now she was what? The, was she the president or the executive director? No, she uh, was the president. She was the president of the USCF. And you know, I got to know Ruth. I, I met her. I didn't get to know her, but I met her when she came and played at the Central Union Open when it was held in Lemonster, which is the city next to Fitchburg, back in the late 70s. She had to be in her early 20s. I have a photo of, I took of her uh, with Peter Biasa. She was actually at that time with Peter Biasa. Yes. yes. Peter Biasa. So they came and played in that tournament, the Central Union Open, back in the late 70s. So we did a tribute to Ruth Herring. Yeah. Good for you. And these players should be should be should be honored, you know, for their yes. contribution to the chess. And we've done that. Yes. Her name is preserved by the USCF in one of their um, championships. So yes. it's it's called the Ruth Herring. It, it, uh, it's well deserving. It's well deserving. Yeah. The Ruth, yes. Ruth, yeah. Ruth needs that 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 distinction. Yeah. So again I, I want to do a shout out to Beatrice Marinello, who is who is um the first woman female uh president of the united states chess federation Thank and you. um i i think uh, also deserving of all the honors and uh you know that might be a, a potential guest for you but um yeah, yeah. You know, oh. i've had her on and uh you know she's uh was the first uh uh female vice president in fide the uh, right. uh on the executive board the presidential board rather uh right. in fide uh and uh, so these are the types of things that we want to recognize. And I just tip of the hat to you for doing what you do. And uh, I just um, want to encourage all viewers that if George could do it, you might be able to do it too. Go contact your yeah. local cable access television. They're looking for content. That's what George is telling us. They yeah. need it. They need something new. And why wouldn't it be chess? But you don't you don't use a demo board, do you? When you're playing over a game, no, no. You actually, you have a wooden. We set, have a, a nice have a set, but we also show it graphically. Our director actually is able to take the game and show graphically each move of the game. Yes, so as the game is analyzed, and uh, it's shown two ways. Both uh, we have a camera shown on the board that both Dave Kucher and I uh, you know, play on, but there's also right. a graph a graphic presentation. Of each move that's played uh, on the screen, so yeah. I got to ask you the board because I I saw it. It's a beautiful board. Is it a House of Staunton? Uh, no, it's actually no. Uh, no, it's actually a set. It's a wooden set. I don't believe it's a House of Staunton. It might have been. It's a set I received when I received a, an achievement award from the USCF years ago. It's a set, a wooden set. Uh, it might have come actually from the House of Sun, from Frank Camerata. When Frank Camerata, you want to mention? Shout Frank out to Frank. Frank another, yeah. yeah, absolutely, Frank Camerata, the House of Sun. By the way, I, I I should mention Frank Camerata, who was one of my assistant TDs in the 1988 U.S. Open in Boston. I was the chief TD of that 60, 618 player U.S. Open, the second largest attendance of any U.S. Open in the country. Of course, Pasadena, 1983, was the biggest. Yeah, I think 836 players at yes. Pasadena in, in 1983. But Boston, 1988, had 618 players, and uh, Frank Camarado was one of my assistants. Again, other assistants I, I had actually uh, California connections. John Hillary, who moved to California, uh -huh. was my assistant. I had Harold Stencil uh, as an assistant. I had. Uh, I know Harold. Yeah. Shout know? out to Harold. And also, the guy we have a connection with in Massachusetts uh, that ended up in California is John Peters. Yes. The, the ma international master. Yeah. John Peters, who actually was multi time the Massachusetts state champion, moved out, became the chess chess. He replaced actually Isaac Cash then in 1982, yes. became the uh, chess columnist for the Washington Times in 1982. Right. Definitely has a master's connection. So both John Hillary and Jack Peters, and uh, another uh, assistant TD at that U.S. Open in Boston, was the late. You remember Ira Lee Riddle? Does that name ring? Oh yeah, up? sure. Yeah, Ira Lee Riddle was actually another assistant TD. Uh, I think of him as Pennsylvania for some reason. He was. He was from yeah. Pennsylvania, right? And the, and David Hader is that a name? David Hader, who's on the executive, currently on the executive board. Yeah, he was an assistant. So I had a very. 
I had, a, a, I think, a very super uh, crew of assistant TDs at the U 1988 U.S. Open in Boston. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, that sounds like a great group. And I one one last thing about Frank, uh, he he became an international master correspondence player as oh, well. Yeah. Yes, Frank Camarone. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so he, he he had his hand in a lot of things. I, I and yeah. uh yeah. Absolutely, right? Exactly. And of course he was very active in, in Connecticut. He actually lived in Connecticut and very much in, uh, involved with Connecticut chess. But I actually uh, when they asked me who do would you want as your assistant TDs for that event? I picked out these people like Hillary and Stencil and Camarada and David Hayter and Ira Lee Riddle. And there was a fellow, a local player, Fred, a Western Mass player named Fred Meyer. I don't know if that name rings a bell, but Fred Meyer, who lived in West, I think in the Springfield area, was an, okay. another assistant TD. So I did uh -huh. have, have a Massachusetts assistant TD. But all yeah, the I was west of springfield so <laughs> right, right, exactly yeah, yeah, yeah i was in the berkshires yes right, right. So that was, springfield was east to me <laughs> yeah exactly right. yeah right but uh also hand and russell um i wanted to you know you mentioned him i wanted another shout out to him because he produced the does he still produce the calendar a, a physical calendar yeah. of all the chess players and dates right. yeah, yeah. And, and if people were to go to chesscafe.com Chess Cafe, thank you. That was, I couldn't come up with it. Yeah. Chesscafe.com. Chesscafe.com. And if people will go there, they will see every day Hannon has a complete list of people who have either died, born or died. He has actually their, their name and the year of birth or the year of their death. And he's, he's been faithfully been doing that. I, I don't know how many years it's been over, it's, I think since the 1980s. I mean, I, I forget when he started the Chess Cafe. But uh, Hannon is really one of the unsung heroes of chess in this country. Yeah, that's I, why I wanted to mention his name again because I think you know the, all the publishing he's done, all the authors he's given an ability to have their voice heard. Um, yeah. And uh, the Chess Cafe was a marvelous place for discussions and uh, uh, people to be able to form a community, even if we weren't physically geographically close. Yeah, we can still feel like we were talking to each other. And he and published some great books. I mean, the, the he book, has. The, yes. Russell Enterprises uh, is coming out with some fantastic books. There's a book that Alex Fishbein just did this past year on the, uh, was it on the ex Exchange French? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, they're, they're great books. If people were to go to uh, Hannah and Russell Enterprises, uh, they, would be, they would marvel at what Hannah and Russell uh, has. He, he's, a, he's been a great contribu contributor to chess. In this I agree, I agree. Yeah, and was it was he a lawyer? Yes, he's retired. Yeah, yeah. He's, I think he's retired from from his law yes. practice. Yeah. Yeah. right. But of course, right. he's the one years ago. Remember, actually, the Russian uh, magazine Shakhmati, Shakhmati vs. Oh yeah. yeah. He actually did translated into English. He did the tr English translate, and they were public. They were published. They were actually English translations of that Russian magazine that Hannon Russell did. I think he did it with the underwriting of a fellow named Jim Bolton. That's Jim Bolton is a well known was a well known player from New England uh, years yes. ago, who actually did, did some financing of that project of translating uh, the Russian magazines in, into English. And Hannah Russell was the one because he studied Russian at Yale. He's a Yale graduate, and uh, Russian was one of his uh, subjects. And he was a very a very accomplished in Russian. Yeah, I don't know how his I don't know how what his Russian, I, but, one of my best friends, Tom Dorish, has oh, since yeah. passed away. But um, he, he, uh, when he was in this in service, he was stationed in Germany, and he and he was learning Russian, you yes. know, because that was going to be his assignment. And uh, so then he could read sixty four and Shakhmat, and he could read those things. And so he would play moves that we hadn't seen, and right. we'd go, "Oh man, Dorish is pretty good." And no, then we find out, oh yeah, it's some Russian grandmaster's move. <laughs> Exactly right. I remember Tom. Do I used to see Tom Dorsch at the U.S. Opens back in the 1970s when I was playing in the 70s and 80s. And now I forget well, actually when he passed away. He did pass away some years ago, but I, I just I, fairly recently. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, but he was active. Actually, I would see him at U.S. Opens. Yeah, he was very, very, very uh, active you know, in, in 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 USF affairs. Yeah. Back well, then. I must say that you know, shout out to Tom because um, he became president of the Northern California Chess. Association when it was absolutely dormant, 
And he built it into a thriving enterprise and put Northern California back on the map. Both he and I got elected to the executive board at the same time of the United States Chess Federation. But it was largely, I, you know, I blame him for getting me involved because uh, he he built the membership up to from very little to eight hundred plus, and right. uh, then there that was eight hundred voters, you know, that yeah. <laughs> people had to pay attention to, and and uh, so then then he springboarded from that to the national scene, and right. uh, but his local presence in Northern California was astounding the tournaments that he supported that he got up and running that he personally and he and his wife then uh carolyn she went by carolyn Whitkit, and yeah. she the two of them ran such great tournaments and another friend richard kupke has taken on the the mantle of doing that he's running these same tournaments that have been running for years and he supported all the local organizers like yeah. the towns of fitchburg the towns like fitchburg in northern california they would have a tournament there and Tom would get the word out and people would go to it and play in it and it, it could be so self-sustaining. So uh, people like that who would often go unsung that are the backbone of what I talk, I think of as our chess community. And, and that yeah. made a difference. He actually, yeah. people like Tom made a difference in chess, in promoting chess and bringing yes. more people into the game. Uh, so these are Thank the other things. These are the unsung heroes that have to be sung about, you know. Uh, yes. And uh, and again, I remember another uh, uh, Northern. I think he was going. To, Max Poshman was that fellow named Posh, uh, Yes, Posh, Hans. 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 Or Hans. Yes. I loved Hans because I used yes. to talk to him in he German. He was a lovable man. We yes. used to converse in German. I used to say we used to converse in German. Uh, but Hans was a lovable guy. I love. Yes. I love Hans. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And he did it in Fremont, and another. Yeah. It's a it's a good city, but it's a yeah. small town in in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, right. But he he was he made it a presence in the chess yeah. world in the chess yeah. scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. yeah. But my producer's barking at me. I've gone uh, way too far uh, yeah. over my uh, time allotment, but yeah. I I could talk to you for hours, and yeah. I think that that um. Is there any question that I have not asked you that I, I should have or that you'd like me to before we wrap up? No, no. I think we've covered a lot of bases here, more than three. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we, we got at least one run scored. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. All right, George. I'm going to take you backstage now, but thank you so much. It was such an enjoyable time to spend with you. Well, and to see you after all these years, it's, okay. it, it, and to remember Stephen, your your fellow TD in those uh, Fitchburg quads way back when. Yes, I will. I'll, I'll send you, him your, your regards. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank goodbye, George. Okay, that was a uh, George Marijanian, uh, one of the unsung heroes of chess, talking about how we can get chess on TV. Go to your local cable TV access, because these people are looking for content. They are the content providers, but they don't come up with the content themselves. Somebody else comes up with the content. Why not you? Why not you taking your knowledge of the game, your knowledge of the personalities involved in the game, and get them to talk, let you talk about chess on the air? You don't have to teach chess move by move. You, there's so much you can talk about. My shows are not chess instructive. There's plenty of chess instruction out there. What you want to do is meet people. And this is what you can do and get why, why are they so passionate about this game? It's an ancient game that people are discovering every day. So it's just wonderful to have been able to talk to them about that and to hopefully inspire others to, um, uh, to take up the mantle and do something in your community for chess, and you'll make a difference. This has been James Ede uh, from the Ede Foundation, and this has been the Chess Class. The answers are out there. It's 1 p.m. Eastern every Friday. See, you'll see me.